women. Join us for our monthly women's prayer line call. It happens the first Saturday of each month at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Central Time. Join women from around the nation as we connect with one another and draw closer to God in prayer. A praying woman is a powerful woman. The number to dial is 712-432-0075. Use access code 502-676-POUND. Again, call 712-432-0075. Use access code 502 502- 676 pound. Send your prayer requests and praise reports to women's ministry at unitedcovenantchurches.com. Together, we are more powerful. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can move mountains. We'll be listening for you on the next call. Come one and come all. That's right. You got to be present on Saturday, September 1st. From 12 to 4 p.m. Where? I'm glad you asked. We are connecting with Frank Bell Funeral Home for the unveiling of the new street renaming of Sterling Place, corner of Classen Avenue, to the Frank and Doris Bell Way. So again, Saturday, September 1st, from 12 to 4 p.m., there will be games, dancing, food, drinks, you name it. Manna from Heaven is here, and we need to make sure everyone knows. So we are inviting all who are available to come and pray our community and hand out Manna from Heaven flyers on Friday, September 7th at 6.30 p.m. sharp. We will be meeting at Tabernacle of Praise. We are called to change the face of the community. Let's do it together. Get ready for Manna from Heaven 2018. We will be taking the mountain climb of faith with dynamic guest speakers such as Pastor Eric Mason. What are you doing? No, God is the worst talent scout because he goes and looks for the worst people because he's going to give them gifts, not look for gifts. He's going to give them talent, not look for talent, so that when they start killing it on the basketball court of life, the glory goes to him and not them. Archbishop William Hudson. Worship causes things that are empty to fill up. Worship caused the unsatisfied individual to become fulfilled. Worship causes those that are dead to come back to life. You see, worship is intimacy with God. Pastor Alexander Pagani. There are certain demons that will only come when your tree grows to a certain level because eagles don't hang out down here, they hang out up here. Now watch this, so do vultures. And our very own Bishop Eric D. Garns. If you are going to have your own way, I've got to learn how to settle my spirit and recognize that you are in charge of whatever is coming in my direction. If you are going to have your own way, I've got to know that the angels are going to guide me through, but I'm not going to die in it. I'm not going to give up in it. I'm not going to lose my mind in it. Save the date for Wednesday, September 12th through Sunday, September 16th. Prepare to be blessed. The New York City Department of Sanitation is holding safe disposal events in each borough to provide New York City residents with a one-stop method to get rid of potentially harmful household products such as pesticides, strong cleaners, mercury devices, paints, oils, electronics, and medications. We all have products stashed away in our homes that may pose a threat to our kids, pets, city workers, and water supply if not handled or disposed of properly. Before attending a safe event, search each room in your home, such as your kitchen, bathroom, storage closets, office, basement, or garage to collect potentially harmful household products. To identify harmful products, look for warning labels that say danger, poison, or caution. Also look for electronics and medications. Bring your harmful household products to a safe disposal event near you. At all DSNY safe disposal events, 
Trained hazardous waste technicians will ask what materials you have and take them from you. Make sure to bring ID to show you're a resident. For more information, visit nyc.gov slash safe disposal. wants us to learn to be givers. And I'm not just talking about just an offering time in church. I'm talking about living to give. God doesn't need us to give. We need to give. And Elijah said to her, fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me a little cake of it first. We're always to bring our first fruits to God. Not what we have left over, but our first fruits. Today, it would be possible that you might see something in the paper like, minister comes to city and robs poor widow. It, it might have seemed like a really unfair, mean thing that Elijah was doing. But let's remember that God sent him. He didn't go on his own. And God knew this woman's condition. And I would imagine that she was praying for a miracle for her and her son. And in order to have that breakthrough, she had to give. Because you can't have a harvest if you don't sow seed. And why in the world will we not want to give to God for what he gives us if we're willing to give to all these other places for things that really are not even that important? We go out and give money for things, go home and stick it in drawers and don't even know where it's at after a week. And see, I believe one of the reasons why so many Christians or at least whichever ones are unhappy, I believe the reason they are unhappy, a lot of them, it's not really their problems. It's because they're not giving back out. They go to church to get a miracle instead of going to be a blessing to other people. You know, money is not the only thing that we can give, but it is interesting to me that God gives us an opportunity to give money because actually you can sow a seed of finances and release your faith for any other area in your life where you need help. I've had times in my life where I've sown special offerings believing God for breakthroughs with my children when they were teenagers, and I trusted God enough that I was willing to give over and above what I normally gave as a sacrificial offering, trusting God to see that seed and bring a harvest in my life. And a tithe means that you give the first 10% of everything that you have to God. And some of you might be thinking, well, I can't afford to do that. Well, you know, honestly and truly, when you learn these principles, you'll come full circle to say, I cannot afford not to do that. And so you might say, God is not taking 10%. He's letting me keep 90%. Just out of respect, we give that to God. It's saying, I love you. I trust you. I appreciate you. And I believe with all of my heart that you're going to take care of me. And then what happens? God causes the 90% to go much further than the 100% would have if he would have kept it. And not only that, when we give, when we really learn how to give, it makes us so happy. I hope and pray that I never have a day in my life, not one day in my life, where I don't give something to somebody. It may be an item. It may be encouragement. I may pray for them. I may give them some time. But I spent too many years of my life unhappy to waste one more moment of my life unhappy. And so I'm encouraging you to be a giver. Live to give. Don't live to get.